Aloha and welcome to this screencast about the Play Example Bootstrap application. This is a pretty simple Play application to demonstrate how you use Play with Twitter Bootstrap 2.0. Um, so this is Play 2.x along with Twitter Bootstrap 2.x. Um, and it turns out that it's pretty simple, although there's a few different little things you have to do in order to get it to work and so I'm hoping this will help make it easy for you. Um, the key points here for this page uh, you have to first modify the project build.scala to uh, download the web jars and bootstrap libraries into your project. So let's go here and you can see that we've modified this file this way. Um, to download this web jars application which is a nice it's almost like Ivy or kind of like the Maven dependency management system um, if you're familiar with those uh, technologies and then once we've um, we've installed the web jars then we can get the bootstrap binaries from this now one of the things you should note is that you need your web jars in application to to have the right version for the particular version of play that you're using um, right now I'm using Play 2.1.0 and I'm also using WebJars 2.1.0. Those two happen to be consistent. Um, your mileage will vary. I don't know what's going to happen when Play goes to 2.2.0, whether or not WebJars, you need 2.2.0 of WebJars or not. Contact the WebJars people though to figure out if you've got the right version of WebJars for your um, your version of Play. If you don't have the right version, you get this weird like classic cast exception or something something not very helpful um, okay so that's the first thing you want to do is you need to get the bootstrap binaries into your environment there's other ways you could do that you could download them manually put them in your CSS directory and so forth but I like this web jars approach um, because it makes updating the versions and and all this other stuff a lot easier and then there's a lot of different libraries available at web jars and so this same approach will work for other kinds of um, third-party files or libraries that you want to put into your application. So that's the first thing. You're going to modify your build.scala. Uh, the second thing you're going to do is um, once you have that web, you're, if you're using web jars, the next thing you have to do is you have to update your uh, route routes file with a route so that your running application can get access to the library that you've downloaded through web jars, which is going to be put in this special web jars directory. Okay, and you'll know when you install this WebJar uh, package into Play, you get this special controller WebJar assets that does the correct redirection and probably does reverse routing and all sorts of groovy things. Um, so anyway, you'll want to do that. So so that's that's kind of the the WebJar's um, part. The um, the third thing you need to do is. Uh, get web jars to be available within your um, you have it in the routing file but now you have to have actually include it in your your HTML files okay and so you're going to want to have a link that looks like this it's weird the way the formatter goes with all these crazy highlighted areas but anyway um, so you'll use this reverse route web jars assets at and then you're going to locate this CSS bootstrap.min.css. That will put all the bootstrap stuff, make it available for use inside your HTML. So for example, we have a class navbar here, which is a bootstrap class. And that now will be available within your HTML because we've um, included that style sheet. OK? So far, so good, right? Okay, the next thing that happens is if you're using one of those nav bars that's, um, in fact, if I go back here, you can see it. If you use one of those nav bars that's fixed to the top, what you will have to then do is make sure that your body is down 50 pixels so that the, so that the body doesn't slide up underneath this static nav bar thing. Um, and most people like that static nav bar, so as a result, what you've got to next do is modify your main.css to um, so in your public style sheets directory in your main.css put in this little body thing um, so that the padding of your body in the top it'll move the body down 50 pixels and so it won't 
be in the 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 nav bar won't be in the way of your your body. Just a thousand little tiny details, it turns out. Okay, the next thing is, and this is, you know, okay, so it turns out that um, Bootstrap has these helpers, okay? So you know what helpers are, right? Helpers are things like this at form, at input text, at select, and so forth. And they are all used to kind of magically expand into HTML code that supports forms and input text fields within a form and so on and so forth. The problem is that if you look uh, at the Twitter Bootstrap documentation, actually maybe the best way is to go um, here. Okay, if you look at the Twitter Bootstrap documentation, you can see that forms, you know, want to have a particular kind of um, layout. So there's going to be a uh, control group class that wraps any particular input and inside there's going to be controls and there's going to be a label, you know, and so there's a certain amount of, of for any given input field, okay, like here or here or whatever, you got all this surrounding junk, okay, that has to be in a particular format. All right, so the problem is, is that when we're writing, when we're using our helpers, okay, uh, such as here, like, you know, this helper, this helper has to know how to expand itself into the HTML with all that surrounding div stuff. And it turns out that um, by default, Play doesn't know about Twitter Bootstrap, and obviously, by the fall, Play doesn't know that you're even using Twitter Bootstrap, so it would be crazy for it to hardwire in the, the surrounding div stuff that includes actually Twitter Bootstrap you know, CSS definitions. So the way you have to get around that for Twitter Bootstrap 2.0 with Play 2.0 is the first thing is you're going to define a new file called Twitter Bootstrap Input.Scala.HTML. Obviously, it could be called anything, but kind of by convention, most people are calling it this. And you could put it in a subclass of subdirectory or subpackage of your views package called helper. And it just is going to look like this. And you just kind of, I don't know, you know, you can read this if you want and it'll start to make sense to you. Um, but if you don't want to read it and you just want to copy that file over into your project, you know, be my guest. Um, and once you've done that, then what you can do is you can say in any particular view file which is going to use one of these helpers you've got to include this line here okay and this basically says this is a predefined field called implicit field constructor and you're going to say that in this particular file you want the value of the implicit field constructor to be this Twitter bootstrap in input thing okay and once you've done that then what's going to happen is when you when uh, this helper file kind of expands into its HTML, it's going to use this particular definition rather than the default definition to do it, so that you're going to expand into the Twitter Bootstrap kind of HTML stuff rather than whatever Play supplies by default. Okay, so a little, it's not really tricky. It's just kind of a hassle. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how, um, and in fact, for this, I'll go to the actual example. So let's, let's um, this is making the nav bar active. So anyway, here we are in our directory with our play example bootstrap, and I call play. And this brings up, you know, play, and then I say run. Okay, and now I go to here, and I type refresh just to convince you and me that that actually worked. Okay, so now we've got our little thing working and what you can see here, we've got a little sample form and it's all formatted in the, you know, groovy Twitter bootstrap style, which is super nice. Um, and in addition, you can see that we have nav bar items and you can, in particular, you can see that our home page is noted to, as active. Okay. Um, and that we could actually click on these things if, if we wanted to. So the first thing is we've got this nav bar and we've got the pages, subpages of our application um, in the nav bar and the current page is highlighted. Okay, so how do we actually achieve that 
in um, you know in Twitter boot in play excuse me and the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna modify now you know that if you go to the views right there's a very common this is in the you know the hello world application you've got this index in main this is a very common design pattern where the main view is basically this template that kind of provides wrapper HTML around whatever the specific content is for the page okay so in fact there's only one real page in this application which is this index page and what it does is it says I want to have the template code from the main page and then you know inside that template where the the at content uh, variable is here's my page specific content okay so the main is actually going to have all of my um, the nav bar stuff because the nav bar is constant for all of the given pages in our application okay so the question is how do we tell um, the nav bar what should be the active item okay and it's it's pretty simple so the first thing we want to do is in our main template we want to have a parameter that indicates what the current page is okay and then here's our little here's our uh, navigation um, uh, you know uh, enumerated list here okay and we just have this little piece of code here remember that you have to have a class equals active um, in the navbar item that's supposed to be highlighted okay so we just have this little bit of you know Scala template stuffy here which is says that the class is going to be active when the current page that we pass in here is equal to whatever the page that we want to have it be okay and then following that we have the actual link that goes to whatever page you know that the button here uh, is is gonna link to whatever page we want to go to okay so in this case just note that I don't have three different pages for this application because I didn't really want to do that um, and it would just clutter the code up so in fact I do have three different navbar items it looks like there's three different pages but there's not because for every single one of these things it's always going to go to the display controller method which is always just going to you know display the single index page so it's faked okay but what I want you to see the only important part here is to notice how it is that you you use this main template to specify what the current page is and then you just got this little piece of code here which is used to make whichever the right navbar item active whichever the right navbar item should be active is made active by that okay so uh, let's see going back to where we want to be um, so that's how do you make the, the current page active okay it's this main template um, that supports the active page and then on each page and then as I said all three navbar items go to the same page so you can download this project type play run or you can type play test if you want to run the simple little test file to make sure that everything's okay uh, and with any luck Follow these instructions and you've got yourself a Twitter bootstrap play application. Have fun.